Welcome to the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. Now then, this one's sort of outdoors, but I'm indoors, aren't I? Well, you can't have everything. Now, one of the things a lot of guys out there love about the outdoors is the water, of course. And on the water, you either go wading or you have a boat, a kayak, a canoe of some sort of vessel that floats. I've got a boat. In that boat, if you do not want to sink, you have to have a bilge pump. Now, sooner or later, within the maintenance program of any small boat fisherman, you're going to have to check things. Now, I noticed a few trips ago, oh, the bilge wasn't working. Hmm. I left it. Just thought, well, won't be rough. Won't take any huge waves over the side of the boat. Wrong, isn't it? It's wrong doing it. It's a bad way of thinking. I did a second trip. No bilge pump. Put it off. The frost came. Oh, I don't want to lay in the boat. Three trips I put in without a bilge pump. Now, that's kind of stupid, isn't it? But what I've done is I've been out, looked at the bilge pump because I thought mine is linked with a float switch. So it comes from the battery. And for those of you who don't know, if water fills up in the back of the boat down in the well, what's called the bilge, that's what's called a bilge pump, a little float goes up like this and goes click. And at that sense of power to the pump, switches the pump on and the pump sucks the water out of the boat fires it out through a tube, a hole above water level, obviously. I'll show you that in a minute. But of course, there's several ways of, of, of doing it. I have heard of them being just linked directly to a switch at the dashboard. So you just want to pump the bilge out, click, that's fine. You pump any excess water out that's down there. But my problem is I trail my boat a lot. Now, while it's out there stood on the chocks, I undo what's called the bung at the back, which is the total drain of the boat, of the bilge. I take that out and I jack it up at the front like this, just a touch, so that any rain that comes in, I mean, it's covered with tarp anyway, any rain that comes, goes down the back, down into the bilge, and just drains straight out of the hole. That's fine, so almost in that situation, no need for bilge pump. Now then, when I'm trailing and I'm fishing for a day's fishing, obviously I leave the bung in, I don't take it in and out all the time, if I'm fishing in, say, two, three days in a row, I just leave it, put it on the trailer, store it in the uh, whichever yard I'm in, you know, whichever marina I'm in. But the problem is, if I get a heavy, you know, thunderburst of rain, that's going to fill it up, and that's going to be an intense pressure on top of my trailer. So, therefore, you need a bilge pump. If you're leaving your boat with the bung in for any length of time, it needs to be able to pump rainwater out. Worse, if you have your boat on a floating mooring or at a marina pontoon, you obviously have the bilge pump in all the, uh, the uh, bung in all the time, has to be, common sense, you must have that bilge pump working on a float switch because therefore if it rains again, heavy rainstorm, it fills up, you're not gonna be there to flick the switch to pump it out. That's why I have mine fitted with a automatic float switch so that I can leave it, the float switch comes up, click, switch a pump on, pumps any excess rainwater out. There we go. I've had to purchase another pump. Now I've been looking at the float switch, float switch, float switch, thinking it was, this problem was there. It's not. I want to take you guys out and show you some of the little tips you can have just to check those bilge pumps. You need it, and do you know what? In a weird scenario, it could even save your life. Let's get out on the boat. The first thing I'm going to do, bail out the bottom of the bilge, get a sponge, get all the water out. I can get to the screws on the float switch and I can see what's happening with the pump. I'm fine, fine. Maybe I can find out what's blocking it up. Well, I'm just gonna squeeze down here, use a scoop here and a sponge, and just sponge out the very last of that water that's drained in the rainwater. Because even though I've got the bung out for standing on a trailer for rain, you will still get some that's gonna filter through. So it's best to work with a dry bilge, and I can see already do you know what's in a little bits of fishing line, little bits of snipped off fishing line? And that is always a classic case of blocking bilges. And a lot of British charter fishermen will probably tell you, indeed, uh, I'm sure charter fishermen around the world suffer from that problem for bits of fishing line going down, blocking up the bilge. That could be my problem. Now, what I'm going to do now, guys, I've taken, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I want you to see the bilge down here. So I'm going to use the light off the big camera, the little small camera, and the sound off the big camera. And I don't know if this is going to work or not. You're going to see. I just wanted you to see the bilge. And this camera, the small one, is like 170 degree angle on it. So you might be able to see it. And I use the floodlight off the big camera. There's my two batteries over there. 
is linked from, I didn't fit this one up myself, company fitted it up for me, and I can see already there's no inline fuse, which they say put a two and a half amp inline fuse to the pump. Now this is the existing pump, it's all cleaned out, I'm hoping you're seeing this. I can see that this, you know, this area here, there's my hole, and then you can see that down the back, there's the bilge hole, the drain plug hole that we normally have, so you have to have that filled up and blocked up with a special plug. Um, just called the bung traditionally so the water can't come back in but when it's on a trailer obviously you take it out so water can drain out but as you can see just there is about an inch to the bottom of the bilge now bilge is the lowest point in the boat really and that's where all the rubbish goes and muck and you can see down here there's bits and pieces I've already got fishing line out of there now there's the pipe that goes out that is obviously connected to the pump normally I've disconnected that I've disconnected the float switch now here you can see the float switch there and then what happens is you can hear it click just like this the float actually moves as the water fills up in the well it pushes that up there if you can see that click that sends a direct current to the pump when it's drained down we can hear it off that's on and off now the reason you would say well why are you changing the pump Graham the reason I'm changing that pump is because hang on one moment it's intermittent so it's sticking so what I've done is taken this out you should disconnect everything when you do this but I wanted to just to show you there is like the impeller that sucks the water out and you can get bits of fishing line just in there just in that in that little join there but where the pump runs so I'm going to change the pump anyway but what I feel is blocking this up two things I use shark fishing oil and I have give this pump a bit of a clear up but I think there's oil in there but there's a very very fine residue of blue paint particles and you can if I put this down hopefully can you see those let me get that light up maybe you can see the blue particles of paint here just there now I feel that's what's going to probably burn this motor out eventually and that's what's making it stick because I painted my one of my boat I normally have a special non slip deck paint that is actually grey and it was really good it's got a grit that you mix in with it but this time I used a different one that's all they had was blue but it came with pre-mixed particles in it and it is rubbish I'm not using this one again that it's all flaky it's all flaky and I feel this paint is peeling off every time I do a wash down that it, it's going down in the bilge it's blocking this pump up maybe it's not bits of fishing line but don't put bits of fishing line little snippets down there it will jam the pump up so you know now what a bilge looks like you can see that there's the bilge you can see there's the float switch and you can see it's dismantled pump and that's what we're going to change for a new one and we'll probably put an inline fuse of about well they're saying two and a half amps on that one so that's what we're going to put there and then i can pump out absolutely no worries at all it will do automated pumping if it's on the trailer or even if it's on a wet mooring so we get that one worked out now Okay guys, I've crimped it and I've got the new pump wired in. Uh, I've screwed back the, uh, cleaned it all out, the float switch as well. I did it with uh, warm water and washing up liquid because I get through so much oil when I'm, uh, fish oil this is, when I'm shark fishing. So it could be in the edge of the float switch. You're just making that little float switch stick a bit. I mean it was working, but let's just do it while we're at it. Maintenance is maintenance. So I'm all wired in here now. Got my crimps, so put me in line fuse further up. But what you might find difficulty with is getting this pipe back on the end of the outflow for the pipe, you know, for the pump. So my tip is I get a cup of water because it's very, very cold here today. We're going to have about five below in a few hours here. So this is going to be very stiff and hard to do. Um, so what I'm going to do is put this in a cup of hot water. This is the plastic pipe here, not the pump and that will make it soft and then I can hopefully work it on there you don't need to clamp it, it'll hold itself and I can screw the pump back in its locating or holding mounting bracket get some hot water on this, get it softened up before this temperature really does bomb out
I don't think as many people have crawled down a bilge with a miniature camera and a light just to show you, you know, what a small boat uh, bilge and float switch looks like. But it's finished now. I'll just move the light around. Hopefully you've got something there. And you can see that pipe is on the uh, outlet of the pump nicely. It goes right back up over the back, over the back of the battery, out the side of the boat. I'll show you on the outside of the boat. The float switch is now screwed down in place. Now, something you should be aware of, I know it sounds sort of idiot proof. Let's just see if I can balance that camera there. You can't just drill these and screw them straight through the hull. You will be filling up with water even faster than the pump can pump it out. Make sure that you have wood mounts and use marine silicon to glue those to the actual hull itself. And then make sure that the screws you use aren't longer and go through the wood and the hull as well. They only want to be short of the wood itself. I know it sounds incredibly stupidly common sense, but you know, that's the way it needs to be in a boat. You need safety and you need everything to work. All I need to do now is just wire up over there, finish wiring up the two batteries, and it is hopefully job done. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to fill it with water and flush the pump. I'm just going to run it dry. It's okay to run dry just for, you know, a test because I want to split this floor off, get rid of this awful blue non-slip paint they've, they've sold me and said it was okay and it's not, and go back to the grey. And I want to put the grit in it on myself, the non-slip particles that they put in to give you grit. I want to do it myself. That was much, much better. I won't mention the name of the paint makers, but, you know, very, very well known. But this blue stuff is absolute yeah it's it's not good there we go guys new build pump fitted and batteries over there just gonna be wired up and we're all done hope you enjoyed it um got a couple other tips i'll show you just inside but i want to get this done now because it's getting very very cold out here okay finally guys i've got it all taped up here if you can see that i've got all the loose stuff up there and i've put another little bit of tape there to keep them up out the uh up out the water just to basically be tidy and here's the float switch is going to work and I'm hoping you heal the pump even though there's no water in the pump you should be able to hear that that is actually now functioning back in working order well I'm back indoors now a little bit warmer in here. I just want to show you, this is the old pump. Okay, this is the old pump. And obviously you've got your pipe there. Just so you guys, because there'll be guys out there that have got boats that they just bought them, uh, paid the money, gone out on them, and uh, don't know how things like bilge pumps and that work. So this is just a basic instruction to give you an idea. I've got an old battery here, which I use inside the house for putting on my echo sound and stuff like that. So I'm just going to pop this on. You should be able to hear it. Now this is the one that sticks but you'll still hear it turn over. Now hopefully you can hear that. Now my batteries are flat, but... Now, if you see now, it's actually sticking, and that's the problem I had. So it worked two or three times, but then it starts to stick. So I'm just gonna show you. You release the base mount with those two tags. I mean, all there's different models of bilge pumps. That pops off, okay? So you can always clean that out, you know, because that's got that screening around the edge there. But you can see pieces of fishing line get in there, and I just know that a lot of that paint off my deck's got in there and probably mess this up. I have cleaned this up just, you know, to show you. And you can unscrew here. Obviously do this when it's all disconnected with the power on the boat. It's got a rubber seal that I should be able to pop there. I don't know if you can see that rubber seal around the edge there. So there, we're going to call it propeller, it's a little impeller, which actually sucks the water up and pushes it out through that hole there, it comes out through there, so you know how it works now. At least it gives you an idea. Now, whether that one's going to work, because I've actually moved it with my finger, I don't know, but I just hope it will, and at least it'll show you roughly. There we go. It's alive, it's alive. <laughs> If it will stand upside down, and then you can see this. But I just can't afford to leave this one because, look, you think, there, yeah, it's stuck. Now it's stuck. I'm touching it on and off. Okay, so this is why I've changed it because I'm going on and off the terminals. Nothing. If I give it a little move, it should. There we go. Now you'd be very, very tempted, wouldn't you, to leave that on the boat, thinking it works. 
but no, there's something in there, it's sticking, it's either my sharp fishing oil, or it could be a mixture of sharp fishing oil and paint chippings, a little fine powder. So, I'm afraid it's got to go into the bin. Now, now I'll try and start it again, no, it won't have it. It's got to go in the bin. You've seen the old pump, stop and start. Finally, I just thought I'd show you, in case anybody says, what's an inline fuse? That's the inline fuse. So that stops it burning out, should it be going all the time, and it does, you know, it's a possibility it might overheat and burn out, who knows, worst case scenario, it sparks, goes into flames. When I measure it, it's about 15 inches from 50 litres to 25 litre fuel tanks. So maybe having a fuse in there is good. On this particular model, always read the instructions with each one, they may well be different. It says drop in an inline two and a half amp fuse. Now that's the holder it's in. It's not gonna be waterproof, it's gonna be sort of spray proof, I guess. It's a rubber sealed tight one. So there's your inline, if you get it, that's why they call it an inline fuse. It's in the line of the current. And there, if I pull it out, is the fuse. Okay, so that's the fuse. So this one's no good, I've got to change it. That's a five amp, so you want to get two and a half amp or whatever that model says put in there. You just fit it in there. And if you want to know how a fuse has gone, it's a sort of S-shaped join between the two terminals in the middle. If that's busted, you've got to get a new fuse. But pop it in, close it up, squeeze that rubber nice and tight, and make sure you keep it above water level. So make sure you put it, say, towards the end of the battery end, out of the well. You don't want it under the water in the, in the actual well in case it's going to spark out, isn't it? Well, there you go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Keep watching a totally awesome outdoor show. We'll try and give you as many tips as we can. And listen, don't forget, the greatest fishing show on YouTube. You must know what it is. The totally awesome fishing show. You want to catch some fish, we'll certainly give you the tips on almost everything that swims. Good luck with it, and good luck with that boating.